Alright, so in the previous video, we talked about creating a fetch request with the GraphQL query as a part of the request body and handle that response over here. Now this can effectively work for any kind of system and you can possibly scale it to contain all these fetch requests into separate services, which can be associated with individual components. And you can possibly use a Redux tool to manage a global state and uh, effectively control the entire state of the UI. But with GraphQL, we can utilize this existing set of tooling that is available today that will basically make our life much easier. So I'm talking about Apollo GraphQL. This comes with a set of tooling both at the client and the server to manage the GraphQL schema on the server and the state of the UI on the client. So Apollo client is a sophisticated GraphQL client that manages data and state in the application. So it enables a declarative programming style that lets us define queries as a part of the UI components and effectively making your code much more modular. We'll get in the details of it as we start building our UI with Apollo client. I also want to mention that Apollo client comes bundled with these range of features that you can add to your application, which will possibly enable you to manage consistency and functionalities like caching very seamlessly into your application. So in order to get started, let's look at the docs here and see how we can install Apollo toolkit into our project. We'll first need to install Apollo Boost, React Apollo and GraphQL packages. So Apollo Boost is like an umbrella package of Apollo client, which comes bundled with these set of libraries libraries that will help us use Apollo client on the front end. So let's go back to our application, pull up our terminal and CD into the code and simply install the Apollo Boost, React Apollo and GraphQL packages. Next, we're going to create the Apollo client, which will connect our application with the GraphQL server. This simply takes one parameter called URI, which is effectively where your GraphQL server is hosted. So if I compare this with our existing example, I'll just have to pass the API URL for GitHub's GraphQL API. So let's get started by first copying these two lines from here and moving it to our app. So I'm going to create a client which will connect to the GitHub's GraphQL API. So I have this part of the implementation ready where I can now make GraphQL queries. So let's figure out how can we effectively make these GraphQL queries now that we have our client established. So there are multiple ways to go about it. If you look at the client object that we got from here, we can simply use client.query and we can make the request as we were doing it in the fetch request over here. So this simply returns a promise which can then be resolved to return the result. Now this can work very well, but it is very similar to what we are doing with the fetch request. We want something better so that we can control the state of the UI and have a global state for managing the entire Apollo client integration into our application. And for those needs, we're going to use Apollo provider, which comes from React Apollo, which we have installed already. So Apollo provider is a typical provider component, which gives us access to the client that we pass over here to the consumer component, which is called query that we can utilize to make the query. So let's simply copy this from here and create the Apollo provider component at the root of our application. So we can map the entire application over here with the Apollo provider. So I'm simply going to create an Apollo provider with a client, which we just created and we'll have to wrap our entire application in this provider. Now, as we are modeling our application, I can simply import the query component from React Apollo and assign it the relevant query that I want to make and utilize this children prop to control the state of the UI. So we'll get loading error and data states from the query component. So as the query is in progress, you'll get loading as true. And if there was any error while fetching results for this query, we'll get this in the error object. And on success, you'll get the data inside the data property. Query component allows us to make GraphQL queries to the client that we created via Apollo provider. I'd highly recommend you to spend some time on the docs and get yourself familiarized with some basic jargons that you would need to scale this application further on. So let's just move this uh, logout button into a separate sidebar for our entire application where we'll also render the avatar of the URL who is logged into our application. So let's just start by creating a new folder here called components in which we'll create uh, the sidebar component, which will be simply a react component 
which will also have access to the query from React Apollo so that we can connect this query to our Apollo provider's client. And in order to write the query, we'll have to import GQL from GraphQL tag. So since we are using Apollo Boost and we didn't have to install GraphQL tag separately, we'll simply import GQL from Apollo Boost because Apollo Boost, as I mentioned earlier, is an umbrella package which contains all these helper libraries under one namespace. I'll create this component over here. Let's call it sidebar and this will be a functional component that is simply going to take an aside and let's add the query component over here which will take the graphql query as the query parameter as we can see over here and we'll write this query called get viewer so if i open graphql api my query will basically look like this in which we'll have to get the avatar URL and the user ID from the GraphQL server. So as you can see that I'm able to get the avatar URL and my GitHub username over here in the response. So I can just copy this query from here and go back to my application. We'll have to wrap this with the GQL tag and our query is going to look like this. So now I can assign this get viewer query over to my query prop of my query component and then manage the children prop via the same format. So I'm just going to copy this over here and let's simply render a fragment which can show us the loading information. If loading is true, then we can simply render that loading. And in case of errors, we're simply going to render the error. And if we have the data and if I look at the response format over here, our data will contain the viewer key, which will have the necessary information available to us. So I'm simply going to check if data has data.viewer. And if that's the case, then we are going to simply render the avatar over here. So it's just going to be an image for now. Uh, we'll modify this later on. Um, and this is going to be data.viewer.avatar URL as we were seeing over here. And we are going to use the login name as the alt property data.viewer.login and we can also move the logout button into our sidebar so i'm just going to cut it from here and simply add it after the query component over here so let's just wrap it in a div so that we can easily contain this together and over here i'm simply going to paste the button component that i had in place so last i'm simply going to export this sidebar component export default sidebar and go back to my application over here and simply import sidebar in here so we'll also have to have to import it and i'm simply going to call it sidebar from dot slash components slash sidebar and we can simply get rid of this fetch request since we don't need it anymore and save our application now I can simply run my app. So I can just do yarn start and run the app on localhost 3000. So you can see that I have an issue on line number 27 of the sidebar component where I've forgotten to close the fragment over here. So I can paste my GitHub token and look at the error that we got from our request. So if I'm going to refresh this again, I should see that I'm getting a 401 unauthorized response from the GraphQL server. This is because we haven't passed the access token into our application. So we are able to store it in our local storage, but we are not passing it as we were passing it in the headers before. So let's go ahead and look at the documentation for Apollo client and search for authentication. And we'll have to check in Apollo client and we want to set the authentication header. So let's just open this documentation. We can see that we have the entire recipe to add the authorization header to the request over here. So we'll have to do some restructuring in our code so that we can initialize the Apollo client 
with appropriate authorization header so that our GraphQL requests can work. So if you look at the fundamental differences here, we are first creating an HTTP link via create HTTP link, which points to our GraphQL server. And then we utilize this link to concatenate it with this authentication link that we create over here. So this will allow us to apply the authentication headers over our HTTP link and giving us the concatenated results as the final link that we can use to connect with our Apollo client. And if we compare this with our Apollo client, which we were creating earlier, we were using a URI property over here. And this has been changed to link. And with link, we'll also have to initialize the caching mechanism manually. We'll be using the Apollo's in-memory cache and simply pass the instance over here. So let's go ahead and first create this HTTP link inside our application. And we are going to need the create HTTP link function from Apollo link HTTP. So I'm going to first import it over here and also install it in my application. I can cd into code and run yarn add Apollo link HTTP. Once I have it installed, I can then simply create the HTTP link. So my link will look like this and I can move GraphQL server URL to this link and concatenate it with the auth link, which we have over here. So I'm simply going to copy the auth link and paste it over here. We'll also need the set context method, which comes from Apollo link context. And I can simply initialize it over here and install this in my application. Next, we're going to create our client, which we can copy over here and clean this one up. We are also going to have to import the in-memory cache as we discussed earlier to specify the caching mechanism. And we can simply install it via yarn add Apollo in cache memory. So that's just about it. We are now accessing the token from the local storage and adding it to the authorization header. So we can now clean this up as well, uh, along with the fetch request that we were making earlier. Hit save and run our application to see if everything works properly. So line number 54 access token is not defined. Okay, so let's just move this token outside so that we have a global access to it and call it access token and refresh the page. Now, if you look at the response after adding the authentication, we can see that we are still getting an error. That's because uh, the request is being made to localhost 3000 slash GraphQL instead of the API github.com slash GraphQL URL. This is because there is a difference in the package that comes with Apollo Boost. So Apollo Boost offers the default package of Apollo client, which has the minimal and shredded functionalities that you need to get started. And since we want all the extended functionalities, we'll have to get the original package that we have over here and make sure that we create the instance of Apollo client with this package. So if I go and refresh the page, I should see that I'm able to get my avatar. Let's also do some refactoring over here and we can trim this code a little bit and get rid of the auth link method over here and simplify the HTTP link creation with the authentication headers. So instead of using create HTTP link, I'm going to use the HTTP link package and we can simply do new HTTP link with the URL and this will allow us to pass the headers directly over here. So we don't need to create this auth link via the set context method and do this concatenation. We can simply pass the headers over here directly. So I'll have to move this code before so that I'm able to access the authentication header and get rid of set context and look at the code that we have gotten finally. So now I'm using new HTTP link to create the HTTP link directly with the headers and setting that directly into my Apollo clients instance. So if I save the page and go back, I should be able to get the result same as usual. So that's it for this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.